So, dudes, today I'm making a comprehensive breakdown explaining the differences between the AR-33 and the L-85, two of Thatcher's primary weapons, assuming we're not counting the shotgun, which, if you want to use, I guess, go ahead, nobody's gonna stop you. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. We're on our road to 100k. Chances are you're watching this video because you don't know which primary you should use on Thatcher. To keep it simple, I'll just let you know right now if you don't want to watch the rest of the video. If you want to play more aggro, take the AR-33. If you want to play more passive, take the L-85. Key differences. Let's compare and contrast. Damage data from Rogue9's chart. Shout out to the homie. The AR-33 has a damage rating of 41. The L-85 has a damage rating of 47. 47 is a pretty daggone high damage rating but it's offset by a slower than average rate of fire at 670 rounds per minute. Comparably, the AR-33 has a faster, but still average 749 rounds per minute rate of fire. One key weakness that the AR-33 has because of its 41 damage rating is that it's a little bit weak against three armored opponents, which you'll be running into more often because you're on attack. It has a T to K of 240 milliseconds. That's fairly average for weapons in Siege, but not particularly fast. The L85 has a faster T to K of 179 milliseconds. So you might think that the L85 is better if I just worked off of those stats alone. We're not taking into consideration the AR33's higher rate of fire, meaning a higher chance of scoring a headshot, which you all know is an insta-kill in Siege. When we get into attachments, I already mentioned to you that the AR33 has an angled grip. An angled grip is a great attachment to have on attack. It makes your assault rifle's ADS speed, more comparable to that of the four gripped SMGs the defenders have access to. This makes your potential for effective aggressive play much higher. I think the AR-33 can be played just as well with a four grip, but I like to run it with an angled grip for the reasons that I already stated. The AR-33 can also mount an ACOG scope. Some people like to run the AR-33 with an angled grip and an ACOG. I've always been really iffy about that combination. I think a hollow sight is a more versatile optic anyway, and I like taking advantage of the fact that I have an angled grip, so my go-to on the AR-33 is the angled and hollow combination. If I want to play more passive angles, and this is usually where Thatcher shines in comp because his role as a soft support means he's going to be watching flanks and covering his hard breacher's plant, as well as the bomb when it goes down, the LD5 is a great gun to put an ACOG scope on. I'll use the hollow sight to give you guys a comparison of how the aiming point bounces around under burst fire and full auto sprays. Okay, so these are some recoil pattern tests. We're gonna do a little bit of burst firing and we're gonna do some full auto recoil control shots. Also keep in mind that right now this is running the foregrip and the flash hider, and the LD5 will also be running the foregrip and the flash hider in the comparison. Okay, here's some burst shots. That's a full spray. Do another full spray real quick. Okay, for that one, I'm not doing any recoil control. Okay, here we go again. No recoil control. Something about the L85 that makes it really distinct with its recoil pattern is that it tends to have a slight pull to the left, up and up and to the left. So if you're not pulling down to the left, you're going to end up with the recoil pattern looking a little bit different. It's just going to keep going to the side, basically. I think there's a very strong case to be made for the AR-33 regardless of the slightly lower damage output against three armored opponents and its slightly smaller magazine. I use the AR-33 for all of the reasons I've already said, but there was a point that I was relying on the ACOG quite a lot. I've recently switched up my playstyle to really only use the hollow. It's a lot more difficult to get Thatcher clips nowadays, so these are all the really only reliable multiplayer Thatcher clips that I have from an era that's bygone. But you're going to notice that I get most of these kills by getting freebies. Somebody peeks when they shouldn't, and then I hit them in the head. That's basically how you play an ACOG anyway. Which further proves my point that the L85 is more suited to the passive kind of player. 
in my ranking of the AR-33 versus the L-85 in the assault rifle tier list, I rank the L-85 higher. I still feel like on paper the gun is better, but in-game effectiveness and on-paper effectiveness can mean very different things. I personally prefer using the AR-33 because of its higher fire rate and the fact that the recoil isn't that difficult to control in the first place. I think in close to medium range and even occasionally long range, I think the AR-33 is a more versatile choice and suited to taking a number of different engagements at different ranges. But the L-85 is more effective at holding lawn angles and popping heads from far away than the AR-33. I very rarely see people use the hollow sight on the L-85, and I think that's for a reason. People take advantage of its almost laser-like recoil control coupled with high damage. But I play a lot more rank than I do comp, so I guess the AR-33 is the rank star of Fasher weapon of choice. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter that much. Just use what you're more comfortable with. That's it. Oh, we're in the hallway right now, Zonda. That's a headshot! Kitchen hall, kitchen hall. What's up if you go to the rest of these kitchen hall? He's bar, 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 bar. Good job. I hope this video helped you make a decision. Subscribe to the Disrupt Gaming YouTube channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, and leave the video a like if you can. Thanks so much for watching. Deuces.